Good morning guys, how are we all today? It is Saturday again and I'm just making up a cup of tea. We've been up for a little while now but we needed to go and do the food shop. So I'm just making a cup of tea now, it's about 11 o'clock and we've got quite a busy weekend this weekend. Obviously a lot of sewing involved. Um, I want to try and crack on with this prom dress as much as I can. So to update you, I went back to mum and dad's on Thursday to re-measure Alex because she bought a different bra which meant that the measurements were different. Oh, hello Chris. Hello. Um, so I re-measured her with that one and we've got a plan of, we basically just need to do exactly the same cut on the pattern but move it up a bit. So I'll be doing that in a little bit um, and then last night I went over to my older sister's house because we had some friends around for tea and a film so that was really nice and then later today it's about 11 o'clock now and at 4 o'clock I've got my older sister coming round for um, me to take a load of pictures of her because she's been really busy sewing and has got lots of outfits made and then tomorrow We've got a younger sister around all day so I can start fitting the prom dress to her. So today I need to do lots of prep work, lots of cutting out of the pattern pieces, um, ideally I'd like to get them stay stitched but we'll see how we go, we'll see what time we've got. But for now I'm going to make a cup of tea. Um, also I'd love to hear from you all in the comments, love to hear how your week's gone. I have officially finished my uni exam so that means that uni work is sort of on the back burner for the time being which makes a lot more time for doing the things I want to do i.e. sewing and everything else that we're going to do over the summer. This camera angle is not the easiest for you to actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to have to crouch down like this but right we've got a cup of tea and I have stuck the pattern back together. I mean, the sensible thing is probably for me to draw around it and recreate these pattern pieces but I'm being lazy and I don't really want to spend the time doing that. So for now, we have stuck them back together so they already don't look pretty and we're about to make them a whole lot worse. But as long as it works, it doesn't need to look pretty. So what we've decided is it needs to move up basically everything an inch and a half up from where I marked it last week. It looks horrible. I think I've used about 10 metres of masking tape and it is going to be an absolute nightmare when it comes to pinning it on the fabric because the pins are not going to go through. But we've got it all pinned down. The difficult bit now is working out where the bust down needs to go, which is the most obvious bit if I get it in the wrong place. 
but I'm thinking if I've got Alex here tomorrow then I can make sure I get it in the right place when she's here. We just need to sort of work out where it's going so I can finish cutting the rest of the pattern because I'll sort of sh I'll show you where we're at for now. Right, so this, this side is where the bus dart needs to go and to be able to finish cutting that bit I need to mark it on, fold it and then cut like where the side sits when it's in so then that means that when it's joined onto another piece the bus dart's already in and it will flow properly um, but they are my horrible looking pattern pieces I really should have recut them but we learn these things, we learn <laughs> just to reiterate if you're wondering and you haven't watched last week's video if I've put it up um, I am not a pro at this I do not know what I'm doing but that is where we have got to and Chris has just come in you're doing alright? Mm, it's a bit bigger than I thought it was a little bit bigger, okay. Hello. Um, so bus start. We are going to do it. My plan is to have it from the centre of the bus, which is at ten and a half inches, and then going outwards. If anything goes a little bit downwards, but like fairly out, outwards. So I'm going to mark that on now. Hopefully you can sort of see what I'm doing. I probably time lapse this. Unless I have anything interesting to say. Um, and we're also going to keep it on this one pan piece. There's no point having it coming this far across. pattern pieces on fabric now except for the front neck facing which is why I wanted to come and mention it to you because I forgot about it earlier we have decided that we definitely need to go lower on the neckline but we haven't quite decided how low I was supposed to look at it on Thursday and completely forgot so I'm leaving that one till Alex is around tomorrow and then we'll decide how low we want to do to go and then I'll cut the um, neck facing accordingly for whatever whatever neckline we decide so everything's pinned onto the fabric now I've got four meters of fabric here and there's a good at least half a meter if not a bit more left at the end and I've not been overly cautious on fabric consumption um, because I'd rather it all be cut out right than try and fit it all into a smaller pace like space as possible um, so I'm quite happy that we've got some spare fabric I am thinking it's lunchtime and I'm getting a bit hungry so I'll probably come and cut this out after some lunch it's only two o'clock and I didn't honestly think I'd get this far but the pattern pieces are all cut there just dumped on the ironing board behind me um, and I've cut out the notches I've marked up the little dotty things where you have to 
mark up for reference when you're making it and I am about to do the stay stitching um, which if you don't know because it's a delicate fabric um, it could stretch quite a lot so to prevent that you go around the perimeter of each pattern piece really gently with a long machine stitch so you do that anything like smaller than your seam allowance and then it's not seen on the final thing um, and it just helps everything stay a little bit more sturdy so if you weren't using a like satin or a really delicate fabric probably wouldn't be as needed but for mine definitely needed um, I do not want to stretch the fabric out of place because then you get all sorts of issues with the neckline and stuff like that so that's what I'm going to start doing now and I've got about two hours to get as much of it done as I can before my sister comes around also um, because for that I'm going to have to separate the pattern the cut fabric from the pattern pieces I'm just going to pop some masking tape on with the letter of pattern piece that it is so when I'm actually putting it together I'm not confused on what's the front piece what's the back piece etc because otherwise there would be quite a few problems knowing me hey guys it's quite a bit later now and I've been joined by Sam which I just wanted to pop on now because can we have an appreciation for her corset I'll turn you around look how gorgeous that is it's all been completely hand sewn look how beautiful that fabric is it's absolutely stunning it's vintage silk it's vintage silk beautiful beautiful pink florals so we have been taking lots of pictures of all of sam's stuff that she's made recently i think we're nearly done aren't we yeah. we've done a good like six or seven outfits at least um, so we're going to take pictures of the corset or the stays next and then there might be one or two more outfits and then we need some tea which I haven't yet cooked and we're starting to get a bit hungry so we'll go and cook some spag bon in a little bit but I just wanted to show you those stays because wow they're, they're incredible absolutely incredible good morning guys it is Sunday and I'm just about to start pinning this pattern this um, dress together so I thought I'd come on and say hello, how are we all? I had such a productive day yesterday. I managed to get all of the pattern cut and altered. I managed to get all of the stay stitching done for everything. I took hundreds and hundreds of pictures of my sister in all her clothes that she wanted photographing. I made tea, I edited a video. Such, such a good day yesterday. Um, so, younger sister Alex is round today, so we'll see how much of a stress we can get together. I think the sewing part seems to be quite a lot quicker, so hopefully we'll get the main construction done today and fitted to her. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to go on with. Just having a look at the instructions because I don't want to get it wrong. I've got the two A pieces now. So they need pinning together up to the seam allowance of the neck. So we don't actually know what neckline we're going for yet. But I can alter that a little bit later. I'm going to get these pinned and see where we get to. That first two pieces are now done. Um, so now I'm just looking at pinning these bust darts in place. I was so, so careful with the sewing. I've got my machine on the longest stitch possible um, because I really don't want, when you've got so many seams, quite often you can get and they like um, sort of just wrinkle at the seams and I really don't want that. It needs to be like super flat. Um, so we're being so, so careful not to stretch the fabric, not to put it through too quickly, not to put too much pressure on it and have the stitches too short so we're doing everything we possibly can i'm pinning this buster in place so that i can go and see if it's roughly in the right place before stitching it because i know with a fabric like this unpicking is not your best idea um i can do it if i have to but it is going to um well it's got a lot of um chance of damaging the fabric 
and I've not got enough left to recut pieces. So we are going to go and see whether these bus starts are in the right place. I'll take you down with me and we'll go and say hello to Alex. Okay, so I'm with Alex there and I've just got her very awkwardly holding the bit of fabric to see where the bus start is. So I'll turn you around and then I can show you properly. Right, this bus start with this piece of fabric properly on the shoulder, the bus start is coming in there, which in my opinion, I think wants moving up about a centimetre, just so it's a little bit higher, um, higher up. So I'm going to do that since I've not stitched it in place, I'm going to move it up a little bit and then we will stitch it in place and see what we think. We'll know a bit more once that, we'll know a bit more once we have got the whole thing attached and we can actually put it on and fit it um, properly. But it's looking much, much better than it was originally. So there was a little bit of toing and froing as far as getting the bust out in the right place. But what we went with in the end was we moved the tip of the dart up 1.5 centimetres but left the other two parts in the same place. So basically instead of the dart going straight across, it's going down a little bit to avoid the armhole. Um, so I've just done my first one. Now I've got the really fiddly bit of trying to tie a knot at the tip because you can't use a reverse stitch um, because it would make it all bulky and sort of like have a little, little poof at the the tip of the dart where you want it quite seamless. So we're going to try and tie this in a knot. Hey guys, so it's a bit later now. I have the front of the dress all put together and I am halfway through doing the back. I've got all the panels attached now, um, but I'm going to be putting in the zip. So the pattern doesn't ask for an invisible zip. It just says insert a zipper, but thinking that it was going straight down the back, I've bought an invisible zip thinking that's going to be like the nicest solution and look the smartest. So I'm about to put that in. Um, I thought I'd show you what I do as I pin it, pin it on. Right, I've got Chris on the um, camera duty. So with an invisible zip, that's sort of how it looks done up. So to fit it, what you have to do is you undo it and you flip it. So you're pinning that side and then basically once it's sewn you sew it as close to the zip teeth as possible with them like rolled out and then once it's sewn it all sort of folds in and your zip sits like that. So I'm going to pin that along the seam allowance down each side and then give it a go at stitching it. You do normally get an invisible zipper foot. Um, but I can't remember, but I don't think I own one of those. So I'm just going to use my piping foot and bodge it a little bit and get it as close as possible as I can to the teeth. It might take a couple of goes, I might go over it a few times, um, but I've done them a couple of times before and we tend to get there in the end. Hi guys, sorry I've um, not filmed that much this afternoon because I've been trying to get as much done as I can um, whilst I've got Alex here but we're now at the point where we can fit it. I've done the neckline although there might be one or two final adjustments on it um, so we've done that. We To do that we put it on as like the tabard without the sides attached, worked out how low we wanted it and then I cut the facing according to where I'd cut the dress that was on Alex. Um, so we've done the neckline and now we need to look at taking it in and do sort of the final adjustments to fit it around the waist and the body and I think the neckline wants picking up like little tiny bits but I'm going to pop you down and then you can see as we do it.
going to be quite hard to see, but I'll go and um, sew this in a sec. So we've taken a little bit up on the shoulders. We've taken it in under the bust. We've taken it in a lot under the arms. And then we've taken it in down these back seams, if you can see that. Um, the reason it's pinned at the top of the back is because it needs a hook and eye to keep it in place. And the, the facing on the neck isn't the neatest, but I'm hoping that once we can get the fit right, I can go along and I can tidy all these things up. Um, but that's what we're looking like. Happy? Happy. Cool. Right, guys. We have what looks like a dress that fits. We've got loads, loads left to do. Don't be under any false illusions. But look how great this looks. Properly cinches in at the waist now. The neckline is spot on, which I'm very happy about. I've still got the shoulders to tidy up. And then we've got this low V at the back. The invisible zip is not too bad. It's not too bad, but the back fits beautifully into her curves and the skirt comes out I'll stand back so you get a um, full view there we go so that at the end of today is what we're looking at so what do I need to do next I need to tidy up round the neckline on the shoulders where I've unpicked it to adjust this shoulder seam I need to sort out the facing I need to put the facing onto the arm um, sleeves at the arms and then what else do I need to do? I need to hem it still but I'm going to make the underskirt first and then I need to basically trim all the excess on the seams inside and I'm going to bind the seams to stop it from fraying um, but I'll show you that when I do it another weekend but that, that is where we've got to today you happy? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? I'm very happy with that. Very, very happy with that. Thank you very much for watching. I'll probably leave the vlog here for today. And I will see you next week when I continue some more sewing. And have a nice weekend. So, thank you very much for watching. Bye. Bye.